This meeting is being recorded. All right, hopefully they edit out this meeting is being recorded because that'd be strange. Welcome back to another episode of Insurance Toolkits podcast during the World Series. I figured why not buy, wear the hat I just spent an exorbitant amount of money on for a team that hopefully doesn't lose tomorrow. We have Ruben on with us this morning and Sam. Sam, one of your first episodes in quite a while. I um, brought him from the back office side on with us today. Um, Ruben, you are a Medi Medicare master and a final expense beast or vice versa. That's why we had you on today from a producer's perspective. So go ahead and introduce yourself to the viewing community and then I'll start off with some fun questions. Absolutely. Well, guys, uh, my name is Ruben Trejo. Uh, I live here in the Houston area in Conroe, uh, north of Houston. I've been doing um, I've been doing insurance since 2008. Um, as a matter of fact, it's 14 years this month. And so, uh, no, um, it's exciting to be here uh, on this podcast. Sam, you guys outnumber me. I do have a question for you, though. Obviously, where you're from is a southern state. Obviously, where Ruben is is a southern state. I need you guys to vote. Is Maryland considered a southern state or not? Uh, it's kind of on the border. I wouldn't consider it a, a southern state. <laughs> I don't know, buddy. <laughs> uh, I got it. Okay. So where do you think the line is where people go from high to y'all geographically? Where do you think it is? Uh, probably somewhere just south of Maryland. You're right. Somewhere right around Richmond, it goes from high to y'all, kind of like how soda <laughs> and pop transition across Pennsylvania. So <laughs> Maybe the viewership can decide, is Maryland a Southern state or kind of somewhere strangely in the middle? Uh, back to insurance. Ruben, how did you get your start in the business 14 years ago? And kind of share, us, share that with us. Okay, well, um, I, was, uh, I had a, a real estate business, okay? I was in the real estate industry for five years. Uh, together with that, I had built a team, a construction team, and we were working and we were making money. We were uh, building big houses uh, for investors. And then 2008 happened. And um, yeah, man, I lost everything. And so um, we were just talking, Chris, you and I, I'm a face-to-face -face person. I need to be in front of someone. And someone brought up... Um, insurance and i said yeah what the heck it was more of an accident um type thing second makes sense makes sense a lot of times i think there's traits that are successful that they come from some kind of other business or have something built inside of them that makes them good at the business you obviously have an entrepreneurial background that's led yourself to success in insurance sam do you feel like in business in general or, or in life in general because they're very similar there are traits that successful people have that have led them to that point of success. Oh yeah, definitely. I think that uh, successful people definitely have a, a certain drive about them like that uh, don't give up kind of drive for sure. There you go. It's that wanting to get to the next step drive that leads people past the point of comfortable and average. So Ruben, you started in the final expense side, slinging final expense in between cat pee and trailers. Talk to us about it. Yeah, you described it perfectly. Cat pee and trailers and cockroaches and fleas and everything else. Uh, yes, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, man, uh, my, my voyage, my journey has been an awesome one that I would not trade for the world. Um, as many insurance uh, agents experience, man, it was, it was difficult uh, the first few years. Um, I started with uh, a hurrah, hurrah company. Everyone knows them as NAA. Um, I traveled from Texas, Houston, Texas, all the way to Alabama to sell because they said, hey, you know what? There's, there's clients all over the U.S. Why not target the U.S.? Uh, so that's what I did. And uh, yeah, that, that didn't last very long. I, I was doing about seven months. And I said, man, I, I'm losing money really, really fast. So I, I got back to I got back to Houston and one of my friends said, hey, man, uh, uh, I've been doing insurance for a while. How about I, I help you here? And I said, cool. 
uh, well, there wasn't a lot of help. So I, um, I went to a place where my commission level was extremely low. Uh, but man, uh, and everything was free. Uh, you and I know that uh, nothing is free. Everything was free, and uh, but I learned I learned the background of what final expense was. I learned everything about it. I learned my presentation. I learned that uh, you know what uh, sometimes you get uh, the door slammed in your face, um, and um, yeah, you get told off quite a bit. Um, yes, it's it's a scary world. Um, and just about five and a half six years ago something happened where everything just clicked and it was a beautiful, beautiful uh, journey. Um, I, I couldn't do, I mean, my week just about five and a half, six years ago, my lowest week was about 9,600. My highest week was 20,000 and I was, I was rolling and I loved it. And so my journey, buddy, has been an exciting one. It's been uh, a, a challenging one, difficult one, but again, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Absolutely. So Sam, I pulled you off of the development side, which is the perfect transition as Ruben is a Medicare master. We're looking to build out more and more Medicare um, cross-sell products into insurance toolkits. And I said, just pause, just give me 20 minutes because Ruben is Medicare and it'll make perfect sense. Ruben, you did final expense for quite a long time, transitioned into Medicare. What led you to that transition? Everyone had uh, been talking to me about Medicare. Um, for me, it, it, it was a push from a friend. Um, he says, dude, you need to do it. Uh, you're doing really, really well. And I said, man, I, I just don't see, I, I don't see the need for it. I'm making a lot of money. Uh, and he says, but where will you be at the age of 60? And I said, okay, okay, okay. Um, and my friend um, asked me the same thing. And I said, I said, buddy, um, I said, I don't understand why you're going from the final expense to the Medicare uh, industry. This was a very, very successful friend. And he told me, hey, hey Ruben, um, he said, January 1st, you're going to have to wake up and go back into uh, into people's houses. He says, I have a sick little girl and um, I would like to stay home if she needs me for a week, two weeks, three weeks, sometimes. And um, and that sold me. Um, it's something that my, my wife had, has been talking to me about. Uh, what if what happens if you get sick? What happens if if you die? Will we be taken care of? And I said, man, you know what? Uh, no. So that's <laughs> that's where I jumped into the Medicare industry. Um, what happened? I I I crash and burn, uh, like I did with final expense. Um, I wasn't scared to do it. I loved the nose uh, because the more nose that uh, came my way, the more notes that I could write down uh, for myself and learn the industry. Right now, we're three weeks in. I'm at 137 uh, uh, Medicare apps right now. And uh, yeah, this is, this again, this month, 2008, is three years in, okay? Incredible. And so um, I'm very successful. I'm doing extremely well. And so, uh, yeah. Uh, and I'm watching my residual uh, checks coming in every single month. It's incredible, Sam. What did I pull? What project did I pull you off of? Uh, what are you trying to put into toolkit so that people can know that it's worth the constant development we're putting into the product? Yeah. So right now I'm working on the hospital indemnity, so we're getting GTL in there. Right now it's just got Heartland in there, but it's about to have uh, GTL, and then I'm going to start working on Medicos uh, hospital indemnity. We just got through putting in all the carriers for now for the DVH, so now we're transitioning into the uh, hospital indemnity. Hopefully, have those done pretty soon. Which is pretty incredible. All I know how to do is hit the record button on podcasts and and read. <laughs> and share posts, but you're actually taking the time to build out products that when we quote it, 
we can sell it confidently and really round out the benefits we're putting in clients' hands. Ruben, there's somebody watching this video, or maybe not at this point in time, but someone who just jumped into AEP, not realizing they're not going to get paid until January. You had a, a good transition though. You came from final expense, you made it into Medicare. Knowing that they're not going to get paid until January, what, what should somebody be doing to kind of cash flow to pay the rent and the mortgage in the meantime? Exactly what you just said. There's hospital indemnity. Okay. That gets you paid all the time. I mean, all throughout uh, AEP. Don't forget final expense. Okay. I'm, I'm a final expense person. And that's how I started. I started with my book of business. I had a large book of business and I was visiting every single person. And I either upgraded uh, their final expense policy and showed them a Medicare product. Okay. But, or, or I showed them a hospital indemnity plan. Again, uh, with a hospital indemn indemnity, I'm not, I'm not king. Um, so yeah, I'm not that guy, but I'd like to get into it because every house that you go into, you should leave with something. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I've added, I've added um, not only hospital indemnity, but I, I've added ACA in uh, my book of business. Every house has, that I go visit at least, has a son or daughter living there. Okay. And I'm always asking about family members. Hey, who's that? Hey, who's that on the wall? Hey, who's that little girl running back and forth? Hey, can you invite them in? And so uh, to go back to your question, buddy, um, they, should, they should have hospital indemnity. They should be uh, selling final expense. They should be selling ACA. Uh, they should be doing something to, to help the client and their family. The interesting thing I just wrote down here in case somebody forgot it, everybody needs Medicare after the age of 65 and everybody dies. So solve one of the problems and one of the problems will pay your rent and one of them will pay you when you're 60 years old and, and don't want to get up January 1st or you really want to 10X your freedom. Many of us get into the final expense game because we want freedom. But freedom doesn't roll as easily from one month to the next as it would 10Xing that income with Medicare. Ruben, you've seen a lot of agents succeed. I'm sure you've seen 10 times as many failure. What are some signs of failure or red flags of failure you've seen agents experience? Repeat the question because um, uh, this, this will, yeah. Why do agents fail? They don't go to work, okay? And I think I was talking to you about this. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have a lot of things, family things, friends, friend issues, and they don't go to work, okay? I'm at my first house at 10 o'clock, and that's because I used to be at my first house at 9 o'clock, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I work from 9 to 9 every single day, and that's how I started I'm a little bit more comfortable now. Uh, as you can see, my, my cheeks are a little bit more round uh, than before. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm still, I'm still running. After 14, I'm still running hard uh, from 10 o'clock to 7 o'clock. And, and that's because my kids are now uh, doing Muay Thai. I want to be able to see them. I want to be able to have dinner with my family. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's something that I built out for my family, for myself. So uh, one sign, you don't go to work, okay? Um, after your first appointment, you go to Walgreens or CVS or HEB or some, some convenience store to buy food. Uh, man, you should be knocking, okay? If, and this was my rule. If I don't make one sale, I don't eat until I make my first sale, okay? I, I have a cooler inside my car, so I don't stop to eat. Um, I, don't, I don't eat until I make my first sale, okay? Uh, the way that I started, Chris, I had no money, buddy. I told you, it, mm -hmm. it's something clicked six years ago, okay? I had no money. Uh, I was fixing to get out of this business, okay? And, um, and I said, let me give this one more shot. So with no leads, no nothing, I went to knock on doors. This was my pitch, ready? Hey, how you doing? My name is Ruben. I'm the insurance man uh, here in Harris County, and I just wanted to come and introduce myself. 
with that being said, uh, do you have insurance? And it was about 10 seconds long. Okay. And I went, I just continued knocking and knocking until someone said, no, <laughs> I would say, great, great. I'm your insurance man. Again, this is my card. I uh, do you have five minutes. Sometimes they would say yes. Sometimes they would say no, but I booked my schedule and that's how I started. Okay. You know, what's interesting is that is almost the exact same story that Jignesh Patel told of starting with a broken leg, no car, and just cold door knocking his way until he had enough money to kind of make it a little easier each way. I said on my training call this morning, I really don't, I think everyone's at the same level of this business. Like no one's better than anybody else. No one is more skilled than anybody else. It's a very even playing field. Like if I went and tried to weight lift with Sam, it would not be an even playing field. It would be embarrassing. Um, Ruben, I don't know if you golf or have any skill set. You could probably beat me in that. But in this business, it's all how hard are you going to go to work? And the harder you work, eventually you can kind of even off the gas. But you don't have to be super personable. You don't have to be really good looking. I don't think any of us probably are. You don't have to be super tech savvy. Toolkits will do the rest for you. You just have to go out and see people. Um, Ruben, what is your schedule like right now? Maybe somebody needs a schedule they can copy because they say, they're saying, I can work, I'll go to work, but what schedule should I work? I work from 10 and I, I, I can show you my schedule. Um, I, I start at 10, buddy, and I end until 7.30. Uh, my schedule, um, I don't know if you could see this, looks a little bit like this, okay? Everything is booked, okay? And those black spots that you don't see, I'm door knocking, mm -hmm. okay? I have to hit my numbers, okay? Um, people say, hey, it's impossible to hit those type of numbers. Guys, I'm working. I'm working hard. And so uh, that's how I feed my family. That's how I'm going to feed my future. So Well said. Yeah. You wrote 20K in final expense in a week before. Was it the same schedule and, and massive level of activity, or was it just dumb luck? uh both uh <laughs> i don't know how i hit twenty thousand. uh the highest that i had a hit was twelve thousand, and that one week it was dumb luck but i was going out to work man it was going out to work. i think if you just do it enough eventually you hit gold on a couple of those kind of weeks but it's that same level of consistency that leads you from one week to the next i think a lot of agents have what it takes they put in the work but then they're nowhere to be found for several weeks afterwards. And it's that level of inconsistency that when the chargebacks come, the kids get sick, the car breaks down, that all of a sudden now you're out of the business because you weren't you know, prepared for that level of adversity. Ruben, would it be fair to say that things go wrong in life, but when they go wrong in your life, they're easier to manage because you've got the savings to do it? Things always go wrong, okay? Um... And it's those challenges where uh, you have to embrace life, you know, and you still have you have you still have a responsibility, whether you're single, you're married, um, have a girlfriend, have kids, whatever. Uh, you still have a responsibility to yourself, okay? And um, yeah, I still it doesn't matter, and I've experienced a lot of death, okay, a lot of misfortune, miscarriages. I still need to go out there and provide for my family. I learned once that sometimes the best way to get over what's going wrong is just to go to work for eight hours. Put it away in a little room in your head. It will, sadly enough, still be there when you're done for the day, but you'll have given yourself time to make some money, see some people, clear your head, and then life will be there at eight o'clock when it's all done. So staying home isn't going to make the problem go away any better. Sometimes the best therapy is more work. Sam, one question for you before we transition to the end. There are a lot of agents that are in live chat, that are on Facebook Messenger, that are reaching out to us. Do you see any common denominators with struggle that maybe Ruben can give them a tip with? Um, yeah, well, the funny thing is, is a lot of agents don't have access to leads or they don't know how to get their leads or what kind of lead flow that they need. You know, the lifeblood of, of this business is leads, obviously, but like Ruben was just saying, if you don't have the, the access to it, then, you know, like he did, just do a lot of door knocking and whatnot. But I, I would be, 
uh, curious to know, and I'm sure a lot of agents would be curious to know about what his lead flow looks like to stay that consistent, uh, because that is a lot of questions that we get. Good one. I couldn't have come up with a better one. Ruben, lead that, flow. That's a great one. I love it. Um, hey, um, I, I, I have Facebook leads. I have direct mail leads. I have internet leads. And I'm getting between 50 and 70 leads every single week, sometimes more, sometimes a little less. Uh, when I get less, like I did this week, I'm door knocking. And I'm asking for referrals, okay? But, or I go visit my book of business because they have family members. Um, what I'm trying to do is all, always stay busy. Again, uh, Facebook, okay? Internet leads, direct mail, okay? They're all gonna get you in front of people, okay? But you also have a book of business that you could go visit, okay? I still go, and I'm sure you guys have, have seen me, I post some pictures with a Snickers bar. Okay, I go visit people on their birthdays. Okay, uh, all the time. Okay, my book is low. Or I'm sorry, my leads are low. Uh, I I figure out for the month of no November. Okay, who am I going to go visit? I leave a Snickers bar and I take a picture. Okay, why do I take a picture? Well, with my last agency, I just wanted wanted them to know that I don't. You know, everything is not sunshine and rainbows. I'm working, okay, and I'm visiting my book of business all the time, okay, and I leave a Snickers bar, and I leave with money, okay, I leave, and, and I know that sounds ugly, I help the person, of course, but I, but I up their, their final expense, I help them with their Medicare, I help their family with ACA, so on and so forth, okay, and I visit the same person every single year. And every single year, it's different. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, stay busy. I think a lot of agents aren't taught the value of working their book of business. And this whole business was founded on the principle of working your book of business. You know, before we were really in this industry, there were no leads. There were no direct mail. There were no Facebook or instant inter internet anything. It was just you, a list, and your power of gaining referrals. So work your book of, book of business get out there and see them on an annual basis, see them when they lapse, see them when you need them, and they'll be there to take care of you on the days that you need it the most. Ruben, we're going to we give our guests the last minute or two to promote themselves, give them a chance if someone's watching and really connects with you to just let them know how to get a hold of you, if they want to work with you or follow you, just take a minute and promote yourself. Awesome. Well, guys, uh, my name is Ruben Trejo. My phone number is 713 480-3120. I do have a new agency. It's Life and Health Hub. The Hub, come and join me. And um, if you need training, if you have questions, give me a call. Outstanding. Thanks again for watching. Like the video, comment below, and subscribe. We're getting ever so close to 2,000 subscribers. Um, I'm really shooting to see 1,500 as soon as possible. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, as Sean Mike would say, that's kind of weird. Help us out and subscribe and um, look forward to seeing hospital indemnity grow on the Insurance Toolkits platform. Thanks to guys like Sam who joined us today. Ruben, thanks for being on. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you. Thanks.